Good evening. Thank you for joining us for our midweek service. Glad to have you with us. I trust that it will be a blessing to you. Uh, you know, I just, what a beautiful day we had today. And I believe it's the, la it's the first day of the last month of 2021, December 1st, 2021. What beautiful weather we had. Trust you've had a good day. Thanks for joining us for our Bible study uh, this evening. As we begin, now I'm going to try to kind of do this uh, technology wise. I'm going to try to move to a screen share where I can uh, show you some things and mention our missionaries of the week and then use it also for our Bible study this evening. And so we're going to see if I can operate the, the, the uh, technology here and get to it. Hopefully everything will uh, come out like we want and uh, we'll get started with this. First of all, thanks for joining us. Trust you've had a good week so far and a good day and I've had the opportunity to maybe even enjoy a little bit of the weather uh, today. Our missionaries of the week this week are BJ and Jesse Cormier and their kids, Seth, Sabrina, Shanna, and Stacy. Uh, they minister in Kenya. Uh, they minister uh, particularly with an emphasis to the deaf. And so uh, they're our missionaries of the week. I trust you'll pray for them and hold them up before the Lord. As we, uh, as we'll do sometimes, I try to give you some trivia. I've got a little bit of trivia for you tonight. It's going to require you uh, maybe doing a little bit of research and uh, being able to get this answer. As I always do, if you find the answer, text me the answer when you get it. This particular one is going to require you to go to their website. And here is your trivia question. On his website, Missionary B.J. Cormier gives some interesting facts about Kenya. Here's the question. What is interesting fact number seven? What is interesting fact number seven? See if you can come up with that and uh, get it to me. Text it to me. When, if you have the answer, if you're able to find it, trust you'll be able to do that. But that's our trivia, and they are our missionaries, the Cormiers. Cormiers, and so keep them in your prayer. As we uh, get started, let me remind you, a lot of things going on at the church this month, some special events. I love this time of the year. The auditorium was beautiful on Sunday, thanks to all those that helped in getting that prepared. Wanted to give you particular notes for the for the Sundays through the month. On the 5th, this coming Sunday, we'll be having our ladies Christmas extravaganza. It'll be after the morning service. We've got a great number of ladies signed up. Looking forward to that. Ladies make plans to stay over after the service. That's December the 5th, this coming Sunday. On the 12th, the Children's Chapel will have their Christmas celebration. So make sure and have your children in place. Look forward to an exciting time there. On December the 19th, we'll have our Christmas concert. I'm excited about this opportunity. Number one, uh, we'll have a special guest with us, a friend of mine by the name of Price Harris. He will be a blessing to you. You'll enjoy his music. He'll join us that day. Also on that day, we'll be hearing from our ensemble. And also we'll have the debut of our handbell choir. So we're excited about that. That's on December the 19th. So please keep that in mind. And then on December the 26th, which is actually the day after Christmas, we'll join together on that Sunday morning for a special TBC family Christmas service. So please keep those things in mind, make plans to be a part of it and uh, be at all the different events. We have other things planned. We have our staff and musicians and deacons, Christmas party, different things. But these are some particular dates through the month for our church family. So please keep those in mind. Through the month of December, I'll be doing a series of messages uh, around the theme of witness his majesty. Witness his majesty. I think it'll be a blessing to you. We'll have a video that goes with each message, and then we'll be looking at a particular, maybe um, lesser known or consider a person who was a part of the great event of the coming of the Christ child. So please keep that in mind. Witness his majesty. It'll begin this coming Sunday morning. So make plans to be a part of that. Be praying uh, for the series. Hey, let's have a word of prayer and then we'll get into our Bible study this evening. Father, we come to you tonight and we thank you for the opportunity to be able to take your word and to read it and study it. I pray you'll challenge us in uh, from it, that we might be reminded of the things that, uh, the choices that we can make and the things that we need to determine that will be a part 
of our lives. We'll thank you for that. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Be taking your Bibles and finding the book of Psalms, Psalm 2. I'll put the verses up on the screen. When we're looking at the first two verses of Psalm 2 in our Bible this evening, hey, as we're doing that, one other thing that we mentioned, we've been having some work that's been done getting supplies together to be able to do food boxes for our Good News Club families. That has come along well. I want to say a special thank you to those who have uh, have been a part of that, have given to it, have contributed to it. This coming Sunday evening, we'll be having an opportunity for you to take part in helping to assemble those boxes. So it's going to be a real important time this coming Sunday. We'll be giving you details about that Sunday morning, but we'll plan on doing that on Sunday evening. So keep that in mind. The truth of the matter is sometimes I think we forget about certain things in our lives that are choices. There are choices that we can make. There are decisions that we can follow. Uh, choices have consequences. Choices have outcomes. Choices are an opportunity for us to sow the right kind of seed from our life. I was noticing in this Psalm, Psalm 9, and I'm going to call your attention to four choices that David makes in this Psalm that I think are worthy choices for all of us. Look, notice verses one and two of Psalm nine, what it says. It says, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. Of course, we understand David wrote this, and it's written as a song. It was something to be sung in the Hebrew worship services. So he puts this song together. At the beginning of this song, he makes clear, and he puts it in that first person singular, that this is something in my life. I think it's a good that we all ought to be able to say. There are four things it says he has determined to do. There are four choices that he has made. And you see them in these verses. You could probably pick them out just like I will do and point them out to you. But notice what he says here. He says there are four things. He says, I will do something. I choose this. Can I tell you this? You can choose to have joy in your life. You can make choices, important choices. Notice the four things that the psalmist says that he has chosen. The first thing he says here, he says, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Now, I think there are two parts to this statement. The first one is the kind of the root of the sentence, I will praise thee. That's, and then it, then it follows it with what we would call a prepositional phrase. But he makes a choice. He says, I choose to praise thee. I choose to praise God. There were probably things going on in David's life that he could have had a justification to maybe complain. He could have had a justification to maybe been, have been discouraged. So many things happen in his life, so many heartbreaks, so many heartaches. But yet he says, I choose, I will praise thee. And then he goes on to say how he's going to do it. I will praise thee. And then here's a phrase, with my whole heart. Not half-hearted praise, wholehearted praise. Number one, he says, I'm making a choice. Here's a choice that I make, I've made in my life. The choice is this. I choose to praise God with all of my being. I choose to give my all in praise to God. Wasn't that a great uh, encouragement or great uh, exhortation for all of us? I choose to praise thee. I choose to praise God. Let me ask you a question. Did you choose to praise God today? Did you praise him with your whole heart? Was it a wholehearted praise or was it a lip service praise? The last time we met for church, did you praise God with your whole heart or were you half-hearted in your worship? He says, I make this, I've made this choice. My choice is this. I will praise God in a wholehearted way. That's a great choice. That's a choice that all of us ought to make. The second thing he says Another, I will, I will show forth all thy marvelous works. When I looked at this, when I was looking at this statement and what the psalmist says here, again, it's a choice that he's making. He says, I'm going to manifest through my life 
the marvelous works of God. My life will be a testimony. My life will be a story of the marvelous works of God. And notice at the middle part, he says, I will show forth how much all thy marvelous works. In other words, he says, my life will be a testimony. I will testify. I will demonstrate. I will make known through my life the grace of God, the mercy of God, the hope that I have in God, the holiness of God, the righteousness of God. I will show forth the things that you've done, how you've worked in my life, how you've demonstrated yourself in my life. I choose. This is a choice I make. I'm going to, admit, in, in, with my best effort, I'm going to manifest the work that God's done in me. I was mentioning in a sermon recently what was said by Mahatma Gandhi when he said, I like your Christ, but I do not like your Christians because your Christians are nothing like your Christ. Our lives should be a demonstration of what God has done through us, but also be a testimony of his marvelous works, the way he's provided, the grace that he has shared, shown toward us, the things about him, the works that he's done in our lives. Our lives ought to be a manifestation of that. He said, I will show forth all thy marvelous works. So these are choices you made. Number one, he says, I choose to praise. Number two, I choose to show forth the works of God that he's done in me. Number three, the third thing he says, I will be glad and rejoice. I choose gladness. I choose rejoicing. And the place of my gladness and rejoicing, I find in God. Again, this is another choice. A choice to praise, a choice to show forth, a choice to be glad and rejoice. Isn't that a great reminder to all of us? I choose to be glad. I choose gladness. I choose rejoicing. The truth of the matter is, if we would choose those things, it can have an effect on other people around us. So the psalmist says, I will be glad. I choose to be glad. I choose to rejoice. And my gladness and rejoicing is in God. I can be glad in God even when I'm not particularly thrilled with my circumstances. I can be glad in God when I'm not particularly uh, glad with my uh, events that I'm having to deal with in my life. He says, I will, I choose gladness and rejoicing. The fourth thing he says here is, I will sing praise to thy name. He said, I choose to sing. Now we know this, David was a wonderful musician. David was a beautiful singer. Some have called him the sweet singer of Israel. But the truth is, any of us can sing, sing praises to God and to his name. So he says, I made, I've made a choice in my life. I choose to sing. I choose to lift my voice in song. It may not, you may not have the prettiest voice, but you can still lift it in song. I just had someone come by my office just this week and show me a video of, of a grandchild singing and a song that they had written. It was, and it was great. It brought such joy to me to hear them. Can I tell you this? Your life can bring joy to others when you sing praises to God. These are choices that David had made. You think about all the events of his life, the years he ran from Saul, the the heartbreak of his sin with Bathsheba, the heartbreak of his wayward son, Absalom, the abandonment of people who called them his friend, all the things, those could have knocked the song out of David. But David said, I have a choice. I choose to sing. 
What choices will you make this week? Through the remainder of this week, from now through Friday, what choices will you make? Will you choose to praise God in a wholehearted way? Will you choose to make his greatness known to others, the works that you've observed, the things that you know that he has done? Will you choose to be glad and rejoice? Will you choose to sing? Will you choose to sing? That is what the psalmist said. And then when he goes to it, he says, and then he acknowledges, O thou most high. Let's make those choices through the remainder of this week. Choose to praise. Choose to testify. Choose to be glad and rejoice. Choose to sing. If you choose to sing, you can bring glory to God. What a great reminder. Make the right choices. Do the things that you have a choice to do that you should. Leave the rest in God's hands. I trust that'll be a reminder. Hey, don't forget the events that are going on this, this month. Keep those in mind. Ladies, don't forget this coming Sunday. Parents, don't forget the following week with the children. Be sure and be a part of the 19th and the Christmas concert. It's going to be a great time uh, for us. Looking forward to that. And then keep in mind, on the 26th, the day after Christmas, this year Christmas is on Saturday. On Sunday, we'll come together for a special Temple Baptist Church family Christmas service. We'll be looking forward to seeing you there. Trust you have a good remainder of your week. Let's be dismissed in prayer. Now, Father, we do thank you for the day. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you've brought us to the close of it. I ask that you would put your arms around those who are hurting and bring joy and rejoicing to their life. I pray that you will exhort those of us who need to be reminded of the reasons we have to, to praise you and the, the responsibility we have to make your works known to others, that they might know what a great God is you are that we serve. Help us to be mindful of that. Lord, we love you and we thank you for this day. Crown it with your blessing. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us. Let me see if I can get out of this uh, sharing. I trust you've had a good week. Don't forget, text me that answer if you haven't already. We'll see you on Sunday.